Um, hey, everybody, thank you very much for joining the call tonight. Um, I, I thought we had a, a spectacular show. Um, somebody just came up to me uh, a little bit ago. It was actually uh, William Regal came up to me and mentioned that this was our 34th. And he just said it to me. He said, man, name a company that could put out 34 um, straight big pay-per-view events like we have and had them pretty much across the board all deliver. Um, and I thought that was pretty cool to think of in that way from the from the little brand that started on the WWE Network uh, all the way to where we are today. Um, it's been quite a ride. Last year and a half has been rough for everyone on, on every single level of from talent to staff to crew to just trying to continue to do what we do to put out product and under the tough circumstances, no fans, a couple fans, uh, video fans, it's, it's, it's not been an easy process. And um, tonight was one of those nights where it felt like something special happened and the door opened back up. Like maybe tonight for the first night, I felt like we could see the light at the end of the tunnel on, on a lot of things. And, you know, we were able to have, um, you know, what, what seemed like a significant amount of, of fans that were very excited and very loud and very passionate to be in here to, to see what we do. Our talent were chomping at the bit to be able to go out there and and uh, and do what they do and show the world uh, how good they are. And I think that tonight, much like the the name of the pay per view, without sounding cliche, uh, you know, stand and deliver is exactly what we did. So. Across the board, I thought this show was spectacular. I thought talent delivered. I thought it flowed well. I thought the um, the layout was good. The set design, the, just everything clicked well. Um, and I want to thank also our partners with, with uh, USA, NBCU, Peacock, just simulcasting on Peacock while we were live on NBC. Um, I thought it was great. And, you know, uh, look forward to following up on it tomorrow night on Peacock. So I'm going to open it up and, and get right to the questions. But the, the special surprise is that Shawn Michaels is here with me um, to, to, <laughs> to participate in this. So feel free. Uh, we'll ask questions. And, uh, you know, if, if you want it to be with Shawn, if you want it to be with me, whatever, and we'll both take a stab at answering them and, and uh, go from there. So uh, I'll open it up to questions now. Thank you guys all for being here. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll reply with one question for us. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. Once again, star one for questions. We'll go to Gary Cassidy, Inside the Ropes, UK. Hi, Paul and Sean. Thank you for taking the time. Um, another incredible Gary. takeover, and we're only at the halfway point. <laughs> so um, my question, you know, for either or both of you, I guess, uh, it's just looking at that incredible main event, a very fitting one. How do you reflect on Ayo Shirai's reign and what's next for her? And also, why was Raquel Gonzalez the woman to eventually dethrone her? I mean, she's had one of the best years ever, but why was she, in your mind, the person that was going to end such a monumental reign? Um, I I'll start by just saying I've said it a lot in these calls. I've said it a lot in press. Not because I'm trying to hype the brand, but because I truly believe it. I believe Ayo Shirai... Is you could make the argument that she is the best female uh, performer on the face of the planet. She's amazing. Um, I truly believe that. Um, she just, I can't say enough good stuff about her, and she has had a mo monumental reign as far as for me, and then I'll let Sean to, to give you his point. As far as for me, why Raquel Gonzalez? Um, right woman, right time. She's got a presence. When you see her, it's hard not to think um, she's a star. You know, and, and it's uh, it's interesting that that's all been in within the last year, year and a half. When you look at the transition from her debuting with Dakota Kai to where she is right now, I mean, from stature to look to physique to just everything, she has capitalized on every second of every moment, transformed herself into an absolute star. And I think she's just nicking the surface. So I, I think, why her? Because she put herself in a position for it to be her. For sure. And that's something 
I, I just have to say it was two and a half years ago, um, and I just happened to stroll into a coconut show in St. Petersburg, and there was this, I mean, two unbelievably beautiful, tall, strong women in all black. It was Raquel Gonzalez and Rhea Ripley standing there together, and I remember just sitting there and looking at them and going, oh my goodness, those two are going to be stars. And... And, and it's happened. Watching Rhea Ripley, homegrown, right? I mean, she is NXT through and through. And I've had the opportunity to watch her grow into an incredible performer. And the work ethic uh, of Raquel Gonzalez is unparalleled. And so that's why, from a personal standpoint, to watch her journey has been one of the most impressive and honestly Feel good stories. You know, it, it, you, you love to watch people that work that hard uh, get recognized for that. And Rio Shirai, for me, it's, sim it's simple all the time. She's money. She's guaranteed every time. Rio Shirai, you can bank on her night after night, takeover after takeover, live show after live show. She is money all the time. And, again, she's earned the right to be called the best in the world because... She proves it night after night. Excellent. Thank you both guys. Can't wait for tomorrow night. Thanks, me too. We'll take our next question from Miguel. Leva, Marcus Spain. Hello, oh, hey Sean, uh, for Spain, first of all. Uh, it has been an incredible show tonight and congratulations to both of you. Um, tonight's main event has left us a big surprise with Raquel uh, as the new NXT Women's Champion. And having her uh, as the new champ makes me a question to myself. Uh, so, what's next for you, Shirai, in NXT? Do you think that she stopped with the brand and must go to Raw or SmackDown, or do you think that there is something more that she needs, she needs to achieve in NXT? I think there's always to achieve. I think, but first of all, Io Shirai is the right to do what she wants to do. So to me, if, if Io Shirai wants to take time off, she takes time off. If she wants to come back and go after Ra Raquel Gonzalez, she's earned that right. If she wants to um, to do something else for a bit or, or any of that, she's earned the right to do all of it. But it, it's, it's an interesting thing here where when, whenever somebody loses an NXT, they, they're so dominant, they're so big, they're so whatever, you know, and, and they have this incredible run, and then all of a sudden, they, 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 uh, there's a bump in the road. They lose a match. And everybody's like, well, you know, clearly they're going someplace else. Like, why is that? You know, it's, it's, it's a funny thing. Like, if somebody loses any place else in the world, nobody goes, well, they're going someplace else. Um, th there's always more to do. There's always more to proving that you're the best. There, there's, there's the next challenge. There's the next competitor. There's the next all of those things. So... For me, it's whatever Io wants to do, but um, I don't see that as she lost one match over the last, I don't know, whatever, 300-something days that she's been champion, and all of a sudden she's just moving on. Well, for me, I say no one disputes it, right? The deepest, best women's division in all the world, right here in NXT, why in heaven's name do you go anywhere else? But stay here and face the best. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Miguel. We'll take our next question from Alistair McGeorge with Metro UK. Uh, hi, Paul. Hi, Sean. How are you both doing? Great, Alistair. Yeah, Paul. Good, good. Um, I want to touch on Walter and his match tonight, and also an interesting tweet from Eric Rowan, who seems interested in sort of coming to the brand to face Walter. Is that a match sort of the two of you would be tempted to look into? And also, could you just tell us a bit about how unique Walter is as a talent? Everybody wants to face Walter until he chops <laughs> him the first time, I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> you see old Mike Tyson, everybody got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Um, that chop sounds good on TV until you take the first one and then you start thinking, like, why did I come here again? Um, I, look, uh, Walter's a machine, different level, different uh, focus, different, you know, if you were to say, what is it that he does this, that's special? Everything. But, but what is, what's special about it? He just does it so well, right? It's 
not a particular thing or some kind of crazy move or some type of special effect or anything else. He makes the simplest things mean everything. He gets the most mileage out of everything. He has created an aura and a, uh, an importance to who he is and what he does that very few people can build. To me, he is straight money, and uh, you know, he's gonna he's gonna travel back home for a little bit. But I'll be honest with you, NXT UK, he's excited to be there. He's excited to be doing all the stuff he is. But I can't get wait I can't wait to get him back here because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of matchups I'd like to see. And realistically, when you just put Walter's name next to a lot of people. You just go, oh, I can't wait to see that. There's a lot of names. Yeah, there isn't anybody that doesn't want to be in the ring with Walter. And certainly for me personally, what I love most about Walter is that he loves NXT UK. And he is faithful to NXT UK, and he's uh, that champion. And I think, as we saw tonight, he's going to be that champion for a long, long time. Well, thank you, and congratulations on the show, and looking forward to tomorrow. Thank you so much. We'll take our next question from Mike Johnson, PWInsider.com. Hey, Mike. Hey, gentlemen. How are you tonight? Great. Yourself? Doing good. Uh, obviously a great show. Congratulations on that. I kind of want to follow up on the Walter conversation and NXT UK. Obviously, uh, Sean's very involved in that brand, and it's been just killing it on all cylinders since its relaunch and its return. Walter's such an important part of that brand, but given what he did tonight with Tommaso Ciampa, how much of there is a, is a lure or a want to pull him off NXT UK and have him here in the States on a full-time basis? And, you know, obviously there's a lot of logistical concerns right now, but, you know, in a perfect world, you know, is that a possibility? Do you see that as his future? Because the narrative has always been that he's wanted to stay based in Europe, could we see a guy based in Europe coming here and working full-time for NXT in the States on a consistent basis? It's not something you've done before, but is that something you might be able to work at, walk, work out with Walter? Yeah, look, here, here's the interesting thing to me. Um, people always go like, well, if you're in the UK, you're wrestling in the UK, or you're in the US, you're wrestling here. It's like, what, seven hours to get to the UK. It's like an hour longer than it takes to get to L.A. from New York. If, if Walter wants, Walter can stay in NXT UK, stay dominant there, stay champion there, stay doing everything he's doing there, and come over here and chop the bejesus out of a bunch of people and never miss a beat. Um, I, it, it really comes down to uh, the restrictions of the time, right? I think he's in a place in his mind where those challenges are very intriguing to him now. Does that mean he wants to leave home? Probably not. Um, but I think the reality of jumping on a plane, coming over here, chopping, chopping somebody until their chest is purple, and then flying back home and doing it again over there is very intriguing to him. So I think you could see Walter in a lot of places. Um, it's, it really is where he wants to go because the door's open for him to go to all of it. It really just comes down to, to the logistics of... Um, what can we make happen with travel restrictions? But once that lifts, all bets are off. Yeah, I was just going to say, if the world would work with us, we would easily figure something out, uh, you know, to, to get Walter uh, as many places as we could. Because it's, as, I, as, I, as and all you know, he is a special, special dude. Uh, everybody knows that. Everybody uh, around the business, everybody who wants to be in the ring with him recognizes that. Uh, it would be great if the world would allow us to to get the the most out of that, but obviously we have to wait on that. All right, thanks for the time and congratulations on a great first night. Thank, thank you. 